Hey everyone, Tyler here at The Movie Beat, continuing with my lesser known, underrated, underappreciated Korean thriller film series. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you guys a review for the 2010 film Midnight FM, starring Sue and Yuji Tae. This is one that I had never seen before. Like, I wonder, why didn't I watch this? I really like all of the actors. I'm looking at the supporting cast, Ma Dong Suk. Jungman Shik, like what's going on? So I think some of the initial reviews for this one were not that great. So kind of put it on the, um, you know, the watch list and then it got buried. So it was time to check it out. I'm pretty glad that I did. Uh, it's got some things that I really liked and then a couple frustrating aspects. So I'm gonna start with giving you guys the plot summary and then give you guys some, some, some goods and bads. I'll share with you guys this DVD at the end. Let's go, here are my thoughts on Midnight FM. In just five years, Go Sun Young, played by Su Wei, has established herself as one of the most respected news and radio voices of her generation. Beginning her career as an anchorwoman, Sun Young now hosts a popular late night movies and film themed radio show called Midnight FM. As Sun Young prepares for her long trip abroad where she plans to study and rejuvenate from her early career driven mindset, she'll be leaving behind her popular nightly program and potentially walking away from a highly coveted position in the newsroom. She'll also be leaving amidst the killing spree of one of Korea's most prolific serial killers whose seventh victim is announced on the eve of her departure. As her last night in Korea, Sun Young is set to go live and host the radio show one final time and deliver her farewell broadcast. But due to some last minute changes, her scheduler calls in a man, played by Ma Dong Suk, one of the show's most avid fans, to appear during the guest segment. But Sun Young knows the man and considers him more of a stalker than an enthusiastic fan and requests a stop to cancel or reschedule the man's appearance to another night after she's long gone. But unbeknownst to Sun Young, a powerful and dangerous man, played by Yuji Tae, has just broken into her home where her sister and two young daughters are resting. As the final radio broadcast commences, the man secretly hijacks the broadcast by using Sun Young's sister's cell phone to secretly send a message to reveal that he will hold her family hostage and kill them if the show doesn't proceed according to his demands. Frightened to her core, over the duration of her farewell broadcast, Sun Young will learn just who the show's most ultimate superfan really is, and for whom ending the broadcast means certain death for her loved ones while threatening the lives of countless others. Now, personally, I loved a lot of the obscure film and musician name drops that happened throughout the course of Midnight FM. So it's writers, the filmmakers, I think clearly are film fans. You're gonna hear uh, titles like The Piano Teacher, A Taxi Driver, Leonard Cohen, Pump Up the Volume. All of these are integral to the driving narrative. Uh, there's a lot of trivia that is used, not only by the lead character, uh, giving to her listeners, but the villain in this film will also use a lot of film and music trivia to get his way as the embodiment, the, the real embodiment of the fictional character Travis from Martin Scorsese's A Taxi Driver. This man, uh, played by Yuji Tae, is taking all inspiration from that role and he's going all the way with it. But I do wish the pressure put on by the show Hijacker and Hostage Taker to play certain songs came in a more clever riddle format rather than just games of memory. And I know I often nitpick some of the more obscure aspects of filmmaking in my reviews, but the big major takeaway that I got from Midnight FM was a lighting masterclass fabulous lighting in this film. For it to have taken place entirely throughout one single night, it does a great job maintaining a colorful and always visually pleasing image through the use of a lot of light refractions through the window coming from the outdoor street lamps and other stylish interior spotlighting that breathe life into both the dark and moody apartment and broadcasting studio environments that really would otherwise have grown tiresome over such a duration and with so few different settings. And I think some of the film's biggest writing strengths come a little bit too late, but at least they come um, in the third act of this film when the villain starts running amok and really wreaking havoc uh, as these multiple black male subplots 
also begin to start running parallel to give some credence to some irrational and nonsensical character behavior that comes early on in the film. It helps to justify that a little bit, but just as these new complexities begin to tighten and uh, create new twists, it all begins to unravel rather quickly. There's also a few story elements that feel unnecessarily contrived, like how one of the daughters is unable to speak while the mother makes her living with her voice over the radio. Stuff like that just feels like, yeah, I, I get it, but a little bit um, low level to me. Also, only further hampering enjoyment of this film, that six-year-old girl, the daughter who can't speak, often feels like she's one of the smartest characters in the movie. Characters behave and respond in ways that will frustrate a lot of the time. In one scene, even after the police are called to the house after reports of a strange man there, when the police don't respond, they leave it at that and then when they get a call that there's no answer you know because the the daughter can't speak she's calling in they're like stop prank calling here that's just not going to happen especially when these police officers who go missing fail to report back there's no follow-up like what okay i get it that you know these type of crimes don't happen a lot but i really don't think that that's how it would play out also there's a scene where sun young she wants to just barge into her apartment she wants to leave the studio go home pretty much get her daughters out herself after only calling the police once like yes they failed to follow up but you just don't make that kind of a decision to do that on your own so it's stuff like that that you're like eh, this is going to maybe uh, scare or you know raise some tension to those who haven't seen a lot of thriller movies but for the seasoned thriller watcher you're like well that's your ticket to death and you know that's not going to happen because she's the main character so it's just frustrating for me also with this film having taken place all throughout one night so the show starts at midnight it goes for several hours because this this uh this hijacking starts to pick up some press there are these live news broadcasts there's these shots of students in their school uniforms like looking at updates on their cell phones following it i'm just like this is 3 a.m kids are not up following this kind of stuff there's no live news shows broadcasting at this hour it would just all take you place without that. So that that was a little bit of a stretch. You're gonna have to click off a little bit to get maximum or to get more enjoyment out of this movie. And although referencing other well-established masterpieces of film like Scorsese's Taxi Driver or Haneke's The Piano Teacher remains one of Midnight FM's most fun features, in the end, it only served as a reminder of the distance and quality between itself and the referenced works. And I kept thinking to myself, every time they brought it up, just kind of would rather be watching one of those movies. That was a little bit of a drawback, kind of a catch-22. Coolest aspect, but reminding me that this film was just not at the level. Um, so overall, I think if you guys have seen a lot of thriller films and you're looking for something that's not a complete waste, but something new, I think that Midnight FM has a pretty cool premise um, and it's got some good acting. And I think the end uh, packs a pretty good punch, um, at least a lot better than s some of the impact that I felt was lacking um, in some key death scenes that happened in this movie. It just didn't hit me very hard so it's usually a sign that it wasn't you know written or um, developed well enough so i'm gonna probably rate midnight fm a 5.5 out of 10. uh definitely check it out if you guys love thriller films and if you've seen a lot already let me know what you guys think of it in the comments below have you seen it um this is the two disc special edition that has some pretty cool special features. I like the pack, I love the art. Uh, there's Yuji Tae as the evil villain in this film, the embodiment of Travis from Taxi Driver. He's got this kind of shaggy fur coat thing that he wears, especially in his opening scene. Awesome co uh, costume. I think it really established him as a pretty scary character, uh, but it didn't fully pan out that way. I wish he kind of kept that on a little bit longer. Looks like something right out of Antarctic Journal. Uh, okay, Sue, she's got her headphones there. I think there was some good scenes in the studio. Back's got nothing really. 
But inside, so just something on the character, the cast, about the movie, the director. This director made some other films, uh, The Tenor and Girl Scout. I have not seen those. The Tenor also starred Yuji Teda. So a little bit of a working relationship there. Always nice to see. And I like the reversible jacket art inside. So maybe I'll flip that around someday. That's um, Sue playing the radio host. And I believe she's in the studio there. And the special features include a commentary, you know, subtitles, some, some pre-production material, the making of documentary. Um, yes, yeah, more production, poster, shooting the poster. Those are always fun to watch music video and trailer so fans of the film i think special features are definitely worth it uh, but overall this one's just going to be up to you guys so i think it's a good fit for lesser known thrillers but this might be one of the um, lower quality ones that i've done so far so let me know what you guys think again uh, if you like this content don't forget to like and subscribe until next time i'm tyler here at the movie beat keep watching movies